What the heck? How did I wake up in a tomb? It's Electroplankton time! Many, many eons ago, when I still scoured through the ancient tomes known today as magazines, I heard tell tale of a tale tell telling named Electroplankton. And by heard, I mean red. And by red, I mean I looked at pictures. See, I hate to break it to y'all, but I can't read. First of all, back then, I have no patience, no abilities, and I'm dyslexic. Besides, with most games, I could discern a rough approximation of what they'll be being just by seeing simply screens. Although, unlike, say, Matchstick, Electroplankton would always elude me. Because what was I looking at? And why was it everywhere? Like, at least in my memory, while not technically a launch title, it sure was featured prominently alongside the likes of Sonic 3D and Metroid Prime Hunters in hella NDS launch promotional material. And then, every time I'd bring it up in the years since, asking if people knew or remembered, 99% of motherfuckers would be like, dog, I don't know, it's like a smash stage or something. And then the remaining 1% person going all like, Tor, you gotta talk about Toshio EY! And it's like, who? So, maybe it's about high time we ask ourselves, who? <laughs> and also, what was up with Electroplankton, anyway? Okay, so first of all, I want to say that Electroplankton isn't a game with like goals or progression exactly. There's no save feature, for instance. You just boot it up, see the title screen, pick either a attract mode mode or a mode mode and a little guy doubling as a scenario and off you go to engage. Like the beautiful mermaid swimming through the harmonics of the ocean. Perhaps where I was always meant to be. Cause ostensibly, each plankton is more so a game onto its own. Titillatingly touching the titular creatures to make audio happen, though the circumstances under which will be drastically different every time. Tracy, for example, has these wee dudes that see the player drawing tracks for them to follow, where on the screen you draw or how quickly you draw or fast will dictate things like tone, pitch and tempo. So one can either make a playfully cacophonous disharmony, Go full Breath of the Wild OST with it. And that's the thing. Already here in just this first initial thingy alone, there's just so much expression in between the vast gradient of sounds that is the screen and the array of motions a human hand can draw. I, uh, <laughs> I quite love this one too, Han and Bo, letting the player pinball blast tadpoles at bouncy musical leaves. Set leaves is adjustable, and so you can set shit up in such a block locking way to create some pretty relaxing melodies. One of those things where the visual language instantly intuits what's going on possibility-wise. Similarly and differently, Luminaria has these wee mazy sequencer buddies that go off on the arrows post-touch. One can touch the arrows too to change their pathing with the notages shifting thusly.
This one looks visually more complicated as a still, but the sound here and simple motions do so much to convey so much. You don't need to know about tempo or what a sequencer is. Just watching these guys go and hearing what they do is more than enough to kind of like <laughs> accidentally stumble into creating something beautiful. God, man, I I love how ds -y these instruments sound. Like, yeah, duh, it's a DS game, but the DS has a rather unique sound palette to it. The way the compression bit crushes up the instruments to fit onto the tiny data jizz, I feel often encouraged composers to go with sounds that sounded good when compressed this way. Soft strings, bell chimes, punchy 808 drums, slow one key E piano and string pluck melodies, instruments most often found in classical music but proc rockishly dragged into modern stylings of the era. Hence why, when I lured all these fuckers into a tight loop of accidental arpeggiations, I instantly heard the Trace Memorian and other Codian harmonies faded mentally, like... Sorry, I just, I, just, I, just, I just had to act out for a bit there. Anyway, these three require your input. If you don't do shit, nothing happens. But they don't all work this way. As Rec Rec, on the other hand, has a beat, and it's one of the more rhythm gamier entries of the bunch. Using instead the microphone to make them make sounds. <laughs> Though, sadly, I didn't have a mic plugged in, and so all I got was the blow hotkey that the emulator uses, and to be honest, this is perfect. Zero notes. Then others are basically just really unique instruments, like marine snow. It's like a piano where the keys don't sit still. Having them dance around and mix about making four one finger chords as they cross and overlap. But it's not random, like much like me goading the guys into a loop, you can get them all to group together in ways that's, well, creative and, and planned and like playing an instrument. Same way, vol voice is more or less just straight up synthesis. Drop a sound in through the mic and then alter it by changing the plankton's body shape. <laughs> Though, again, I only have the noise button, but, but, but you know, the idea is great. Beatness as well is a Mario based sequencer, which is possibly the most gimmicky one, but I'd be lying if I said I couldn't not stank to this. Like, this is just fun as fuck, and again, a way to be creative. There's also ones like Sun Animal Cool that aren't even musical in nature per se, but more so just a whole experience. Thing is, you plant these happy plankton around the touchscreen and watch them grow bigger and smilier and louder and brighter, crescendoing into this blast of notes as they all grow up big. Uh, 
did, did, did we just give birth to something? I mean, honestly, if that ain't secretly actually the most musical act, the act of giving life creation to a experience, I don't know what the fuck is. Though also, speaking of what the fuck is, what the fuck is a fucking animal cue? Whew, uh, you know what? Let's not think about that. It's such a relaxing game though, honestly. Like, I, I fucks with, you know, Aquazone, whatever, on the Saturn, for example. It's cute, but I think this is probably the more game way to do such a thing. Aquazone could be just a DVD or a screensaver, but Electroplankton has to be a fully interactive game. Even just spinning the guys in a black void to make soothing selected Ambient Works Volume 2 ass sounds has a playfulness to it. A playing. A game that, despite not having scores or goals, utilizes the medium in a really clever and cool way, far as I'm concerned. As even the goddamn let the game play itself mode still lets you interject and mess around. It's like they, they didn't add a save feature because they didn't want electroplankton to be used as a tool. Which fittingly ain't what this is, but what it is is as much a game as it is a instrument. Combining playing and playing. And in my opinion, that's really wonderful and unique. It's creativity made manifest on a console that one could argue really had that as a core integral core core to its design. So I definitely get why this was set up alongside it in marketing as much as it was. It may have never made a splash as big, probably because, again, most of the instruments don't convey through images in magazines, but if the DS had any equivalent to Wii Sports, I'd Honestly, gladly, loudly, and proudly, pick Electro Plankton. Oh my god, I thought that said Nintendo World Trade Center! <laughs> Well dang, the Nintendo DS library sure does something something. Box art. America has the skinny boxes, Europe has the fat boxes, but the prettiest boxes I ever done seen has to be this lean, mean, cardboard blue electroplankton sheen machine. But all the guys listen on the back too, it comes with some amazingly dope deep blue translucent earbuds just as well, and of course we have the shiny cartridge, and maybe one of the cutest Manuels ever did, posting hand-drawn illustrations of how to game and some free get. Ooh, official design documents too, very nice. Oh yeah, uh, looking at this, who indeed is Toshio Iwai with his name all up on the box Kojima style like that? Well, he damn near made the game on his own. Not entirely, games so, so very rarely are, as he did have help from Indie Zero, a studio who do many a interactive media type releases and rhythm games. Having worked on the likes of theater rhythm and brain training, so a perfect fit if there ever was any. But this was like Toshio's whole entire vision and project, and so Iwata wanted to have his name on there to signify this. You see, it was already a known quantity outside of games as well, and more of a general artist than just a games designer. Sort of a similar situation as Osamu Sato or Masaya Matsura. 
rather multimedia era PC games design esque, which I'm not gonna lie, that's a DS's whole vibe in general. The more that I think about it, like the UI is PC as heck. It's flooded with adventure games and other interactive experiences, and games that aren't games, and more so just applications and very general mature audiences type media in the grown and smart sense. Where in between software, point and clicks, multimedia, activity centers, and tools and time wasters, we saw this blurring of lines between instrument, software, and game. And wouldn't you know it, that is the goddamn realm that Toshio got his start in gaming-wise. Starting with the weirdly similar sim tunes where one draws to make music. SimTunes is the only creativity software that allows kids to make their own musical pictures. Just draw with the colored dots that double as musical notes. Aside from that though, and a Famicom game, he more so concerned himself with music and art installations. Doing a lot of interesting work with screens, cameras, and audience participation. Like this trippy setup of CRTs with new to 1993 live visual effects of those standing in front for the central station in Antwerp. It's gone now, sadly, but that's only a few hours away by train for me, apparently, despite being in a different country. The Europe moment, I suppose, and I totally would have made the journey just to see that in person if I could. There's also Music Insect, a interactive table that's... Well, it's just physical electroplankton about a decade before the game, honestly. It also do hella shit with music making visuals. It's all really dope, and I'd love to behold some of this IRL someday, if possible. As for more electroplankton itself, however, it's not a Katamari-type case where Nintendo or Indie Zero went ham with it on their own. I take it because they just really respected the man, so what little is there all has his blessing. Like the Smash Ultimate stage, based on Hanenbo. The little tadpole boys shooting out and about at action-packed speeds, making their slow noises as the branch platforms can be adjusted through violent engagement. It's pretty neat. I think, though, it would have been very chaotic, cute, and anti-pro smash in a way I'd always respect if the whole thing had bouncy castle physics, but sadly, it's more so as if a game of electroplankton is being played by someone else while y'all are fighting in it, which I suppose is maybe more thematically apropos for Smash's toy box theming thing. Yo, what the fuck? They got penis man up in this bit. And otherwise, a few of the planktons were sold separately as DSI wear releases. As far as I can tell, these aren't any different other than the Mario music one having more 8-bit tunes to choose from. Well, maybe that's also in the base game somehow, as there's many a cheeky variabilations that still elude me. It is truly a game of mystery, after all. One that, marketing aside, was apparently only released in limited quantities and retailers in the States. Which... Uh, uh, that, that, that is such a Nintendo of America move right there. Block the Raymond Bryce, yeet the Ashley, and limit the game Iwata treated like a holy boon for the console. Whatever, I guess. If this Nintendo fandom shithole website is to be believed, the Guinness World Records Gamer Edition 2008 deemed Electroplankton to be the first game in which the player could compose their own music. True fact, very real. But it is a super duper special game all the same. One I'd argue is quite emblematic of the DS as a whole and is, again, as much a toy as it is a instrument. It'd be easy and Honestly, sort of lame to precede any mention of it with, well, you see, it's not really a game exactly. This bitch, goddammit, Electroplankton is out here putting the P in play in by combining playing and playing, so it's about as dog damn game as it gets, motherfucker. <laughs> wow. Speaking of putting in the P. Three, two, one. 